My name is Steve Finner. My pronouns are he, him, and his. And as today's worship associate, I extend to you a warm welcome. Thank you for joining us in this time of worship on this beautiful day. We deeply appreciate your presence and your fellowship. And I will add, I'm very happy to be put into this pulpit at the last minute because Membership Sunday is always one of my favorites. The Unitarian Church of Montpelier is a Unitarian Universalist congregation founded in 1864. We are a religious community that welcomes all as we journey together, seeking spiritual wholeness and justice in the world. Whether you are a newcomer, a longtime member, or somewhere in between, you are part of our community and we are glad you are here. Any and all newcomers are invited to fill out our worship form, which you will find in the Zoom chat, and is available at the welcome table so that we can connect with you outside of our service. Thank you to our greeters and our ushers, both in the sanctuary and on Zoom, who are offering hospitality and tech help throughout the service. I invite you now to take a moment to turn your video on, go into gallery view on your Zoom screen, or turn to your neighbors from your seats here in the sanctuary and offer one another your greetings. I have a few brief announcements about the life of our congregation. As we have an OWL class meeting in the vestry this morning, those in the sanctuary are asked to exit the building after the service using the front doors, unless you are in need of the Elevet or the restrooms. And Ansel Plug from our UCM Board of Directors has a special announcement to share. Good morning. I'm Ansel Plug. I'm a UCM board member, and I have two board-related announcements. The first is that there will be a budget forum next Sunday after the service. We are so grateful for everybody who participated in our stewardship drive. Uh, the ET, the executive team, and the finance committee have been working on the budget. The um, board approved this preliminary budget to bring to the congregation at our annual meeting, which is going to be May 22nd. And if you have any detail-related questions about the budget, I encourage you to come to this budget forum, which, again, is going to be next Sunday after the service. My second announcement is that at our annual meeting, we will be electing three new board members. Um, the governing board meets meet monthly and is tasked with the long-term visioning um, and planning and priority setting for the congregation. If this is something that interests you or you have questions about it, please contact one of the board members and um, nominate yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Ansel. Finally, please read the weekly e-newsletter to learn more about the many opportunities and upcoming events in our church community. And now let us enter more deeply into our time of worship with our prelude.
These opening words in the form of a prayer are by Sean Parker Dennison. Prayer for bodies. There is no life without the body. There is no prayer without the body. We invite all bodies into this space, which we make sacred with our presence, <clears throat> with the presence of our bodies. Your body is welcome here, holy, just as it is. How does your body feel right now? How would your body like to pray? Would you like to touch the earth? Would you like to take a smooth, easy breath? To close your eyes? Would you like to lie on the floor or simply bow your head? Here we respect all bodies and everybody by waiting for consent. Do you consent to be in relationship with the sacred? Do you consent to engage with love? Do you consent to have your prayers answered? Spirit of life, we ask that you bless our bodies. We give thanks for our bodies full of joy and wonder. We thank you for the thousands of ways we can play with, decorate, and inhabit our glorious, one-of-a-kind bodies. We ask for the strength to be shamelessly embodied. We pray to know the love that never fails, love that is unoffendable, love that fills our bodies with joy. How would you like to be with other bodies in this moment of prayer? Would you like to be touched, to hold hands, to put your hand on a shoulder or feel a hand on yours? Would you like to remain alone? Would you like to be wrapped in someone's arms? Find a way now to ask for what you want and to achieve consent in this moment of prayer. Spirit of life, we ask that you bless our desire to be connected. We long to relate to other bodies with all the love, joy, beauty, and learning possible through connection. May we be filled with gratitude for the differences among us as we learn to love with all our senses, elated by the beauty and holiness enfleshed here among and within us. Return your attention to your body, to this sacred body. Are you still aware? Are you still here with us in body and spirit? Here there is no division, no hierarchy. You are body. You are blessed and beautiful. Bodies need not be still. Prayer need not be still. Do you want to pray by moving? Does your praying body want to stretch, breathe, dance, and sway? How do you want to bless your body, which is itself a blessing to you? Embodied love, we wiggle and stretch. We hold ourselves still. We tense, we relax, we blink our eyes, we expand our lungs, our heart beats. We are grateful to be bodies. So often we forget the sacred sight of our being. Help us remember our bodies are to be enjoyed, celebrated, and loved. There is no life, no prayer, without this holy flesh. May we remember to treat our bodies with reverence. Together, we pray and worship as bodies. All bodies, all people, all creation invited to the table set for us by love and by our ancestors. 
Here we give thanks for each of us, for all of us, for all the parts of us, one body connected by covenant, which is embodied love. Let us bring our bodies into our time of worship together and into our opening hymn. Please rise in body or spirit, enjoying and singing number 1053 in the Teal Hymnal, How Could Anyone? Let us now light the chalice, symbol of our Unitarian Universalist faith. As board member Ansel Plug lights the chalice here in the sanctuary, I invite you to light a chalice at home if you have one nearby. And hear these words by Cindy Festian. We are all beautiful and capable in different ways with various strengths and talents. We are all holy, part of the universe and the interdependent web. We like this chalice, cherishing our differences and holding each other in sacredness. During this morning's service, we honor the newest members of the Unitarian Church of Montpelier and their decision to formalize their commitment to this community by joining our congregation. As we begin our new member ceremony, I'd like to invite forward any children who are in the sanctuary who might want to have a closer view of what's happening up front. You can have a seat on the floor um, right here in front of the chancel. Liza, our director of Lifespan Spiritual Exploration, will join you. She has with us our official membership book that goes back many decades now to the 1970s, and you can have a look at that if you'd like. As Unitarian Universalists, we come together with the understanding that being in community together is more important than dogma and creed. And thus, the relationships that we build in our congregations and the trust and dialogue that come in those relationships are essential to our faith. Freely entering into the bond of membership is one way of deepening your relationship to this religious community. While anyone, member or friend, can participate actively in the life of this community, those who become members are choosing to make a special commitment 
to be active and engaged participants and decision makers of the congregation, to be in covenantal relationship with other members of the church and to affirm their sense of belonging in a more formal way. Anyone who is 14 years old or older who's committed to our mission can join the church as a member. And if you're interested in learning more about membership at any point, you can contact me or Elaine Ball, our Congregational Life Coordinator. And now Elaine will introduce the new members being recognized this morning. Good morning. <clears throat> I'm Elaine, and my pronouns are she and they, and I would like to ask our new members being recognized today to stand. If they're able, we are inviting them to line up here, and I would also like to read a few names of some of our recent new members over the past couple of years. Um, so today, we are recognizing in person six of our nine new members joining our congregation this spring. Some are out of town singing with the choir or maybe joining us for our new member Sunday in the fall. But today, I'll just quickly read names and then invite you all up. We're welcoming Rebecca Davin, Betty Roy, Ann Sarka, and Joyce Wernken, and Katie Spring. A few of the new members that we've recognized in recent years, if you happen to be here, um, I'd love for you to stand and wave as well. Um, Amy and Ashley Sweet, Jen Matthews and Bill Newberger, Gail Picard, Kathleen Poole, Nadine Budbill and Mia Rothlin, Bryce Douglas, Michaela Angert, Don Evans, Kathy Hartshorn, Gilly Hopkins and Molly McGraw, Elaine and Rob McIntyre, Emily Seifert, Kim Cheney, Catherine and Steve Codius, Jenny Druitz and Phil Steimick, Georgina and Numa Haas, Lise Marcus and Juliana Plummer. These are just a few of the new members that we've welcomed in the past two to three years. Some of them joined our church just before the pandemic hit and others have joined during the pandemic times. So we're just thrilled that people have continued to find a spiritual home here at the Unitarian Church of Montpelier. So we'd like to invite forward Meredith is one of our board members, and Art Stuckey is on our membership and hospitality committee, and they'll be welcoming our new members today with a carnation and a special book about Unitarian Universalism and a new member certificate. We're so glad that you have found here at UCM a spiritual home, a place to be nurtured, a place to grow and learn and minister to others as much as you are ministered to, a place to work with others and to make our world and our community better for everyone. You'll find a brief bios of our new members in um, along with your order of service. If you didn't receive one, you can find one after the service. Um, that gives a little bit more of a lengthy introduction, but as I'm calling each of their names, I'm going to read just a brief introduction of each of them. So I hope whether you're on Zoom or in person, you will keep an eye out um, at our coffee hours and around town for these new members and say hello and welcome them into our community. Rebecca Davin has lived in central Vermont since 2008 enjoys taking walks on the bike path by the river, and will be starting a new job at CVMC this month. 
She found our welcoming UCM community in 2016 and has volunteered at our Monday community lunches. Betty Roy grew up in New Hampshire. She loves to spend time in nature, gardening, reading, and creating things. And she came to Barrie, Vermont two and a half years ago. She's been an educator since 1984. And during COVID, she tried finding many virtual church homes and landed here at UCM. Ansel Plug is currently on our board <laughs> and has been a longtime friend and participant in the life of our church congregation, particularly with our um, social action committee. And Katie Spring, welcome, is a local farmer and we're so excited to have her and her son, Waylon, joining us this morning. Anne Sarka has been attending UCM for about 40 years. <laughs> so we're thrilled that she has officially joined. Um, she grew up in the hills of Cuttingsville, Vermont, at Spring Lake Ranch, and has worked for a number of years for as a community organizer and for various arts organizations. And since retiring, has worked to develop a yearly river celebration and has taken up painting and swims and dances as much as possible. Such an inspiration. <laughs> and Joyce Wernken moved from New York City to Vermont in 1968 and raised three sons in Essex Junction before moving to Montpelier in 1993. She has worked at the Vermont, or she did work at the Vermont Center for Independent Living for 21 years and retired in 2014. Also loves drawing, art, writing, and music and enjoying as much time as possible outdoors as so many in our community do. So along with the bios that you'll find with your orders of service or that we'll have after the service at our outdoor coffee hour, please join us for outdoor coffee hour. We have actual coffee and tea available today. <laughs> It's not just bring your own. And we also have baked goods. So thank you, thank you to all of our bakers. Um, we're so glad to welcome you all here today. And congratulations for taking this step in your spiritual journey. I'm going to take a brief photo. We're not quite done with the ceremony yet. <laughs> Sorry, um, not time for will, the photo yet. We'll definitely, <laughs> we'll have, that was a good warm up applause though. I loved it. Um, so Becky, Betty, Ansel, Katie, Ann, Joyce, and Joyce. You have already signed or will after the service, our membership book. Um, and joining UCM is much more than just signing your name in the book. It means being a part of this gathered community, those here present, those joining us remotely. It means taking part in our shared ministry. It means speaking up about the future of our congregation, offering and receiving spiritual gifts, supporting others, and being supported in return. So I have a question. If you will join us in this mission and work, please say, I will. And now I invite the congregation to join in welcoming you as new members of this community and committing themselves to be in covenant with you. I invite the congregation to please rise as you're able. If you're here in the sanctuary, feel free to rise at home if you would like, if you're joining remotely. We will join together in a responsive litany of membership that includes our congregational covenant. There are parts for the congregation, for our new members, and for all of us to speak together, starting with the congregation. We welcome you with joy into the sacred bonds of membership. 
we welcome you with love into the life of this community. We promise to be with you in times of joy and sorrow. We honor your search for truth and meaning. We will walk with you as together we see the truth in love as we serve one another and our wider community and that land. As members of the Unitarian Church of Montpelier, we covenant to speak honestly and listen deeply to each other and the voice within them. Take responsibility for the impact our words, actions, and inactions have on each other. Honor the gifts of the past and be gentle with each other as we grow. And forgive each other and start again. May we continue to grow together in wisdom and love as individual seekers and as one congregation connected to those who came before us and those who will come after us. We commit ourselves anew to the sacred work of serving our mission and sharing our ministry. It is with so much joy that we welcome these newest members to the Unitarian Church of Montpelier. Please join in making a joyful noise here and wherever you are joining from. I've been a member of Unitarian Universalist congregations since 1974. And with everything that's gone on with my life, that is the one thing for which I am so grateful that I've had that connection with this faith. Generosity is a spiritual value that is central to our personal well-being and the well-being of our church community. It is a blessing and a privilege of our free church tradition to support the shared values of this congregation with the generosity of our collective financial resources. Each month through the UCM Community Pouch Program, we share part of our collection with an important church fund or with a community organization aligned with our values. During the month of May, our Community Pouch recipient is Outright Vermont. 
Outright Vermont is building a Vermont where all LGBTQ plus youth have hope, equity, and power. The program which will be supported is Camp Outright, a traditional residential summer camp with a queer twist. The impact of a single week at camp is profound and lasting. And as one youth said, I want to live for moments like this. Your contribution to the UCM Community Pouch this month will directly support this work. If you are in the sanctuary, you can make a financial contribution today by placing your offering in the dark green pouch found at the outside ends of each pew. Cash offerings will be split between Outright Vermont and the church. You can also donate online. Go to ucmvt.org and click Donate to UCM. There are options to contribute to the general fund, which supports the general operating budget of the church, the community pouch, or both. You can also mail a check to the church, or you can use our text to give option. Simply send a text message with the word give to 802-266-4646. Four eight four eight. Let me repeat that. Eight zero two two six six four eight four eight, and follow the instructions sent to you. We are so grateful to each and every one of you for your generosity in its many forms. While the offering is being given and gratefully received. Please enjoy this musical offering, which will be introduced by our acting director of music, Danya Prince. <clears throat> Hi, is this, yes it is, very good. So this is kind of a big day. Not only is it the first uh, new member ceremony we've had in person in over two years, it's the first time the choir has sung live in person since early March of 2020. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And um, before we begin, I do just want to take a moment to acknowledge and appreciate this wonderful group of resilient singers who, um, as well as those who are not here but who have been singing with us regularly but couldn't make it today, they have hung on through and put up with over two years of Zoom choir, about five or six different rehearsal venues, crazy rehearsal protocols, schedules, and recording logistics, and all the while holding on to their love of singing as a group together. And it's, it's been such an honor to be with them. Um, <clears throat> The piece we're going to sing today is one that we've been working on for Music Sunday, and it seems appropriate both to this moment and as well as to New Member Sunday. It's by composer Eric Whitaker, who was the creator of the first virtual choir back in 2010. And I want, just want to read to you what he said about this piece, and then I'll read to you the lyrics before we begin. In March of 2020, as the COVID-19 crisis began to unfold around the world, it became clear that this moment in history was going to be remembered as one of great suffering for many people, as well as a time of growing division and dissent. It seemed that as the global community began to isolate physically from one another, the same kind of isolation was happening on a social level, that the very fabric of society was tearing at the seams. In that spirit, I wrote the music and words to sing gently with the hope that it might give some small measure of comfort for those who need it, and that it might suggest a way of living with one another that is compassionate, gentle, and kind. Sing Gently received its premiere online on July 19, 2020, performed by the 17,572 singers from around the world of Virtual Choir 6. 
And these are the lyrics. May we sing together always. May our voice be soft. May our singing be music for others. And may it keep others aloft. May we stand together always. May our voice be strong. May we hear the singing always. And may we always sing along. Sing gently always. Sing gently as one. Thank you so much, choir. How wonderful it is to hear your voices again live in our worship service. 
and here in the sanctuary to even feel the vibrations of those voices. I invite you now into a time of meditation and prayer. Taking a moment again to tune into your body. How does your body feel? What does it need in this moment? Is sitting still and quiet what your body and you need in this moment? Is taking a slower, deeper breath what your body needs? Is lifting up your arms and stretching what your body needs in this moment? Really pay attention to your body. And what of your heart and spirit? What sorrows or joys do you carry with you on your heart this morning? What is troubling you today? What is enlivening and gladdening your heart today? Here we make space for all of it, for all of you. If you are joining on Zoom and wish to, you can share your joys and sorrows in the chat so that we can offer you and one another love and support. Our lay pastoral caregivers are also available to offer a listening ear of care after today's service. We have Mary Jane Olson available here in the sanctuary and Ruth Witte available by phone. I want to lift up one pastoral concern shared by a member of our congregation. Elaine McIntyre wanted us to know that um, her husband, Rob, has taken a steep decline and is being readmitted to Dartmouth-Hitchcock. Let us hold Elaine and Rob in our hearts. I also want to acknowledge that this has been a tumultuous and difficult week for many with the leaked draft opinion of the majority of the Supreme Court in favor of overturning Roe versus Wade. This news has probably stirred up many emotions, perhaps some complex emotions, especially on this day when our culture celebrates and honors mothers. I invite you to breathe with those emotions now and with all that is on your heart this morning knowing that this energy shows us our passion, shows us our love and care for ourselves and for one another. On this Mother's Day, we acknowledge the fullness of what it means to mother. And in this spirit, I share with you these words by Taryn Strauss. Do you know what motherhood is? beyond gender, beyond bringing life, beyond feeding and cherishing the tender, fragile form of life's beginning, beyond dusting off a scrape and applying a balm, beyond calling the school and advocating for the safest, most liberated learning, beyond staying up and keeping vigil, beyond driving the car in traffic to rush someone to their most beloved, most fleeting interest, beyond demanding an end to all wars, violence, and shooting that always kills the precious children of mothers, beyond scraping together reserves of courage to send off their precious heart into places where either learning or growth, or bullies, or bullets could all happen. It's living for someone beyond the self. Motherhood is the holiest prayer. Motherhood is foot washing. It is hours of devotionals, years of polishing sacred and non-sacred objects. It is the same vow made in the convent a purpose beyond the self 
wholly undertaken with all thy might. So give all the flowers in the world, arrange the breakfast tray just so, write love letters, praise your mother's name, curse or forgive the mother who could not make the vow stick. Not every monk fulfills their call either. Bless the pregnant person who released their baby into the dreamscape, who chose life in service to a different purpose. Perhaps that person had a mother who fought for them to be safe and control their own body like any mother would. Mothering is limitless. We can all mother each other. Praying to the great God, Mama, we can hardly find the words nor acts of devotion to compare to someone who lived entirely for us beyond the self. What you can do is mother someone else while loving yourself well. Continue the vow to someone beyond the self, the daily acts of devotion. Nurture something growing. Heal someone who is not well. Liberate someone who needs to get free. Speak out for those who have no voice. Make peace somehow, somewhere. It's what your mother would have wanted. And let us now join in a time of quiet meditation. Recently, I found myself at an indoor pool in the Berkshires of Massachusetts with my spouse and our son and some friends. I hadn't been in a pool in months, and with the summertime just around the corner, but not quite here yet, I relished the opportunity to sink my body into a pool of water. Maybe it was because we had just spent these long winter months all covered up and also pretty isolated and out of view of one another. But I will admit that I was more interested than usual in other people's bodies. <laughs> there were people with young bodies who moved quickly and energetically through the water. There were people with older bodies who took their time or who sat comfortably at the tables on the deck. All around, there were bare legs and arms, shoulders and bellies. It delighted me to see the diversity of the bodies in that pool. I noticed how unabashedly we were all there together, just as we were, 
no hiding of flaws, simply allowing our bodies to be. I was with my son in a shallower end of the pool when a group of kids arrived. One of them looked to be a little bit older than my eight-year-old son. He had dark hair and brown skin. He was on the chubby side. He was so obviously comfortable in the water and in his body. He started up a conversation. You can show him how to do this, he said to me as he put his hands together and demonstrated a mini dive plunging into the water. I watched him come back up as water dripped from his dark curls. It felt to me like a moment of heaven present on earth at that indoor pool, a kind of paradise in which we were all accepted without prejudice or judgment, free to play and delight, to be beautifully human together. Our bodies are sacred and beautiful gifts, though we might not often think of our bodies as beautiful. I wonder, did you ever learn that your body is beautiful just as it is? Your body is beautiful with all of its skin, whatever shade or complexion it is, with all your muscles, however hard or soft, your fat, however lean or abundant, your joints, however limber or achy, your hair thick or thin, your bones long or short, your nose pointy or rounded, your teeth straight or crooked or missing, your cheeks high or flat, your ears large or small, your hips curvy or narrow, your knees wobbly or sturdy, original or new. <laughs> your body is beautiful, just as it is. Most of us don't receive this kind of affirmation along the way. Instead, we receive messages about how our bodies are inadequate, ugly, shameful. I can attest that I have received the, these kinds of messages throughout my life. Here's just one example. In my Filipino family, there's a habit of adults greeting children by pinching their noses. The intent being that this would help ensure that their noses became pointier rather than round, a relic of beauty standards adopted through colonization. I had my own nose pinched more times than I can recall. I'm sure you have your own examples of these messages that teach us to be ashamed of our bodies. And these messages can be hard to shake. Other people's notions of our bodies can control our own thoughts and feelings about our bodies. We begin to judge ourselves by the standards that others have set. This can start early and become especially intense in the teenage and adult years, but it continues regardless of age. Many people into their 50s, 60s, 70s are still wrestling with these notions of beauty and worthiness. Unlearning these messages can take some effort and intention, and it can take time. It can be an act of defiance to accept and even proclaim one's own beauty. The following essay by Jennifer Nyslein illustrates this well. Thank you to Eliza Thomas for bringing it to my attention. I will warn you, there is some profanity in this essay, most of which I will leave just as it is. She writes, lately I've been thinking about how goddamn beautiful I am. <laughs> I think the pandemic finally did it for me. The isolation, the lack of humans in my orbit, all those masks, all that face covering meant that the only faces I saw in real life belonged to my family. 
I already found my husband and son goddamn beautiful. So the only live person's beauty I had left to consider was my own. I didn't do it consciously, but here we are. I love my lopsided lips. When I bother to catch my own eye while I'm washing my hands in the bathroom, I think that no one in the world has a mouth like mine, and it makes me happy. Somewhere along the way, I lost my nice, fat rear end, but I've developed some pads of fat on my upper hips that are like shelves for small, nearly weightless items like guitar picks. And I get a kick out of thinking that they're there for evolutionary purposes. Also, I love my thick eyebrows and the tendons in my feet and the freckles on my shoulders. The thing about appreciating how goddamn beautiful you are is that it leads to appreciating how goddamn beautiful other people are. I love when someone has what I think of as merry eyes. Think of the late Sherman Hemsley's face. Didn't he always seem like he was having fun? My friend Robin, a doctor, has them too. When she's not smiling, her eyes look kind. And I imagine those eyes are a comfort to her patients. I love soft bellies and big hands, the vulnerability of bare napes, hair with texture and curl to it, the look of a big chunky nose, the tender expressions most people have when they think no one's paying attention to them, how we can recognize each other just by the particular way we each move our bodies in the world, the fact that an unexpected laugh both crumples and expands a face, which seems like it would be the opposite of beautiful, but is really the most goddamn beautiful thing there ever was. This is all a secret between you and me though. When we talk, please don't mention anything about my appearance and I won't say anything about yours. We're both more than that. Still, please know that when I look at you, I see beauty. Nicelene's writing is tongue and cheek, and yet I can feel the reverent self-love that her words point to. This self-love is critical to overcoming so many of the messages that we receive about the ways we ought to be ashamed of our bodies. In her book, The Body is Not an Apology, Sonia Renee Taylor calls for a revolution away from body shame and towards radical self-love loving our bodies just as they are. Now the body is not in apologies, a whole movement of people who support one another in practicing self-love and affirming one another in rejecting the ways that our society has to come to define the worthiness and beauty of some bodies over others. Women have often been at the forefront of these movements, yet this move towards radical self-love has been taken on by and is important for people of all genders in whatever form that gender is expressed. This valuing of bodies is at the heart of the Our Whole Lives program. How wonderful it's been to have fourth, fifth, and sixth graders downstairs in the vestry for our program over the last few weeks. One of the most important things that it teaches is that our young people teaches our young people is that bodies come in different colors and sizes, shapes, abilities, gender expressions, and that diversity is wonderful. That diversity is beautiful. That diversity is sacred, which means that each and every one of us, each and every one of you is beautiful and sacred. When we don't accept the value and the diversity of all bodies, we start to seek to control other people in ways that are oppressive and damaging. Sonia Renee Taylor has said, one of the things we will notice is that even if oppression isn't about the body, all oppression happens on the body. So how we think and believe about bodies will determine how we resource some bodies and don't resource others. 
how we think about and what we believe about bodies matters because it is through our bodies that our inherent worth and dignity as well as our freedom come into fruition or alternatively are denied. When radical self-love is at the heart of how we view our own and others' bodies, then we can begin to hold the kind of reverence for ourselves and others that is necessary to treat people in the fullness of their embodied selves with respect and with dignity. With this reverence, we can begin to provide the resources necessary so that people in all kinds of bodies thrive. When we begin to see our own bodies as beautiful, we can begin to see other bodies as beautiful too. We can hold as sacred these bodies that give life, that embrace tenderly, that plant gardens, that roll down sidewalks, that prepare and serve meals, that sing heartily and dance joyfully, and that swim and splash happily in the water. May we each come to know and affirm our beauty and the beauty of others and make it so that all of us and our bodies are free to thrive in the beauty of this world. So may it be. I'll invite you to rise in body or spirit, join in singing our closing hymn, which is number 1007 in the teal hymnal. There's a river flowing in my soul. Please join together now in saying our congregational mission statement. We welcome all as we build a loving community to nurture each person's spiritual journey, serve human need, 
and protect the earth, our home. After today's service, we will have coffee hour outside. All are invited. Even if you are on Zoom, you can come on by. If you are on Zoom, you're welcome to stay and share greetings there with one another for a few minutes. And if you're on Zoom, I invite you to turn your video on once again and to go into gallery view to take in the beauty of this gathered community. And I will make it so that those in the sanctuary can also see you. May you go from here knowing that you are nothing less than beautiful. May your body be safe and whole. May you treat yourself and others with reverence and with respect. And may you go in peace and return again in love. And we conclude our service with the postlude. 